the $250 Apple Watch SE versus the $900 Apple Watch Ultra. Is it really worth spending that much money on this watch? Today, we'll find out. We'll test the battery life, features and functionality, and is it really worth spending that much more for a better, better watch? In today's day in the life. Brother, it's new. Okay, fine. Afternoon in the life. We're expediting the process, but we're still gonna be testing everything overall. If you've watched my channel before, you know I love Apple Pay. We're gonna head to a coffee shop and see Will Apple Pay work on both of these watches? And I'm gonna make sure to leave my phone at home because we don't want internet connection on either device. Can I spend $10 on a nice New York cup of coffee using these watches? So my son here, Tejas, is a devout follower of the Apple Watch SE. And he kind of actually inspired me to get it because I was like, do I really need to spend all this money on the Ultra? I did end up getting the 40 millimeter SE, which is the smallest size. It looks real cute on my wrist. He has the 44 millimeter SE, and then this is the 49 millimeter Ultra. So that's what we're using. This is the non-cellular model, so it's the cheapest Apple Watch SE you can buy. This is the absolute most expensive Apple Watch Ultra that you can buy. What more do I need? I just need my rings well, to what, be closed? Why didn't you get the Ultra? For 700 more dollars. All I do is check my rings and see the sun. You're right, I could buy four of these watches versus one of these. Yes. So I could have an entire family of Apple Watches. What more does this do than that? The action button. Stay till the end to find out. <laughs> now that we're outside, the brightness of these two screens, definitely the Ultra has just a tad bit more brightness, but not as bright as this guy. But overall, you can see both screens really well out when you're outside walking around. You need that extra brightness, I guess. <laughs> it's legible. If there's any smartwatch or smart finish tracker out there, I would say the Apple Watch SE beats the screen on the Garmin. Apple Watch SE is at 100%, the Ultra is at 67%. There's no phone connection on the SE, but we do have cellular on the Apple Watch Ultra. So it might drain a little more battery, but we'll see how the battery drains over time. Can I do a small cappuccino, please? What's the milk? What's up? And can I also do an Apple turnover? Whatever you want, bro. Apple Watch SE, Apple Pay, no phone. <laughs> Do you guys take Apple Pay? Do you take Apple Pay? Do you take Apple Pay? <laughs> All right. So, so far, payments, getting food and drinks works. Exact same. And guess what? You save $750 You're right. with this. And imagine how many coffees I could buy in New York exactly. City. Exactly. Apple turnover for the Apple video. From what I've read, 80% of the features are pretty consistent on the SC and the Ultra. There's those small things here and there that are gonna be different. So the Apple Pay took 0% of battery so far on either device. Oh, the Ultra has dropped 1%. Wow. The SC has stayed at 100. And because I've already been here, it's already connected to the coffee shop's Wi-Fi. So what's really neat is I can actually send and receive text messages on my Apple Watch SC without needing cellular because I've already been to this coffee shop and knows the password and it already connected. Text Tejas. How are you doing, big guy? So there you go. I just did it. I just asked her to send a message. And my phone is not here. We left it at the house, right? Phone's not here. It's at the house. It says it's going to send. I say, all right, confirm. So it's delivered right here. Oh! oh. So even just wow. having coffee shop Wi-Fi, I can send and receive messages and do FaceTime audio calls. Send with Siri. Send with Siri. So that's pretty powerful. I don't know if you even need cellular at this point, but you can pay $50 extra for that. Use my link below. Oh, really? You get your own, a new number? No, it links to your number. It becomes technically a second number, but it, like the, your carrier will use special like number sharing to mm. link it all together. And then you have one number and both devices. Now it's time to go get lunch. I know we just finished breakfast, but that's okay. And the win of the Apple Watch Ultra having cellular means that I can use navigation and maps navigate to the nearest Chipotle. Whereas if I do it on the SE, navigate to the nearest Chipotle. Because we actually left Wi-Fi, I won't be able to do it, but I think if I pulled it up beforehand, <laughs> I would have. So maybe you want to use Wi-Fi, get directions, but there are no offline Apple Maps, so we need that. Okay. Or if you just know where you're going, you'll be fine. So as you guys remember from the last video with us taking a test, my like knees and hips are all like wanked up. After that test, man, I can't walk the same. I'll be honest with you. Is this where data is having too much of an effect? What's the temperature in New York and Celsius? In New York, it's two degrees Celsius. Obviously, I'm dressed for the weather, and I got my iced coffee, because that's how we do it here. You're from Irvine, California. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm a New Yorker now. <laughs> we are now at Chipotle, and I think they saw my last Apple Watch video where you couldn't use Apple Pay for the Chipotle rewards, and they added it. So now I have my Chipotle rewards on both wrists. Let's go get double the points, baby. <laughs> Apple Watch SE is at 94% and the Apple Watch Ultra is at 59%. So they both lost around 6 to 7% battery life so far. No iPhone is here. So one of our friends is coming to meet us right now and the thing I love about having my watch is I can see on Find My Friends how far away he is. He's about one mile away. Uh, if the Apple Watch SE was a cellular model, I would be able to see that too. But I can only see it on the Ultra right now. 
And it's just a convenient way of knowing, all right, how far are my friends from me? We do share our live locations, and I like doing fine friends. If you want to be my fine friend, let me know. The difference is that the Ultra has a U1 chip, whereas the SE does not. So if I'm trying to find objects like air tags, I can use my watch to find it, whereas on the SE, it doesn't support that. As well as cars that have the U1 chip, the ultra wideband chip, you can't use the SE for that, but you can use the Series 8 and the Ultra. Fun really? fact. Yeah. Do you have a car with ultra wideband? No. Me neither. Oh, no. no. So I don't have my phone, but he texted me his order, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna order Chipotle through my watch. Now the Chipotle Rewards is now on the watch, so I'm gonna do it. Pass information here, scroll down. Can I use my uh, Chipotle Rewards? Thank you. Boom, credit card, Apple Pay. All on the Apple Watch SE, no phone. Battery update, it's been about two-ish hours. The SE is at 90%, so 10% loss, and the Ultra is at 47%, so that's about a 20% loss. This is using cellular, this is not using any cellular. All right, so we just finished lunch, and now we're gonna head home. We're gonna test out the workout features, how they're different. This has an action button, this does not. We'll test the water resistance features, because this can go scuba diving, this cannot. And lastly, we're gonna get a little bit of work done, so how does the Apple Watch impact my work day? Let's head back to my office. Now we are back home. Phone has not left, and neither has Apple Pay. Now we're gonna go to the computer, get some editing done. One of my favorite features with the Apple Watch, it works on all of them, is the unlock your MacBook. So now that I'm here, we're gonna hit the keyboard to power this on. Unlocking with Apple Watch, it says right here. So now it shows unlocked by this Apple Watch, and we're good to go. So it works with the Apple Watch SE, and it works with the Ultra. I don't need to type in my password. I don't need to type in a touch ID. It just works. So now I'm gonna get some work done on my computer. Apple Watch made it super easy to get in. Oh shoot, we actually have to go work out soon, don't we? I'm gonna go shower first, and then we'll get a workout in. Now when it comes to water resistance, the Apple Watch Ultra obviously is a scuba diving watch and you can go much deeper in the ocean. Whereas the SC, probably a pool is fine. But let's be honest, how many of us are actually going scuba diving? I still shower with both watches, been pretty fine, get Apple Care. But when it comes to water, for most scenarios, for most people, you'll be fine. Now get out of here. So we're gonna engage a run. I'm gonna press open right here, start workout. Ready, three, two, one, I'm gonna tap it to start, tap the action button and now we're off. Both devices are gonna track my heart rate as well as distance and pacing. The thing that I don't like about these two is they're wrist-based optical sensors. Any wrist-based heart rate monitor is not gonna be super accurate. So the best thing to do is grab a chest heart rate strap and you can connect this to both of them. The SE does have an older optical heart rate sensor, whereas the Ultra has a newer one. So maybe you'll get slightly more accurate numbers like right now. I see 131 and 132, pretty close. I'm in zone two. But anytime I'm doing heart rate training, I always wear the chest heart rate strap just because I know I can trust this Whereas these ones, I can't trust as much. So it's not just heart rate monitoring that's different, but it's also GPS. This has a dual band, which the Series 8 and SC do not. And because I live in a city with tall towers and buildings, classic one band GPS might not be as accurate. So if that's a big important factor for you, you wanna go with the Ultra. So like right now I'm checking the distance 0.23 on the Ultra, 0.22 on the SC. Pretty freaking close, to be honest with you. Pacing wise, 9.17 on the SC, 8.34 on the Ultra. I don't know why the pacing is so far off. If you do a lot of outdoor exercises and knowing your distance and pacing closer to almost perfect is important to you, that's where the high price of the Ultra comes in. But I think for the average person who's just trying to be healthy, live a good life, and get most of their workouts tracked, the SE is honestly a freaking great option. So we're stuck at the stoplight right here. And what's really nice is they're both pausing and starting at the same exact time. So because I stopped running, they both say pause now. So we're literally running to the gym because I'm late and I'm about to do a strength training workout. When it comes to strength training workouts, both watches are pretty good because you're not really tracking distance. It's mostly heart rate. An Apple Watch, from what I've read online, has some of the best heart rate sensors. Strength training is really hard to grab good heart rate because your arms are always moving. The other big difference is blood oxygen sensing. So the Apple Watch Ultra has oxygen as well as EKG, whereas the SC does not. Those are really neat features and they give me life-saving features for a lot of people. But for the most part, they're not necessary. If you have the money, I consider it as like insurance so you can measure these metrics. But for the average person, they might not be needed. So if you can't afford it, the SC is still a great choice. Distance and pacing update, 0.59 on the SC and 0.60 on the Ultra. So they're pretty freaking close together right now. 142, 150 heart rate on each one. Battery update, we are at 48% on the Ultra, 96% on the SC. I did charge it for a little bit of a software update. Let's end our run. So when it comes to ending the run, I have to press both buttons here to pause and then swipe to end. Same thing with the Ultra. I press two buttons and it pauses and then I can swipe over and hit end here. We got 0.7 miles versus 0.67 miles. 
11.54 pace versus 11.29 pace. And now I'm gonna save these and go ahead and do my strength training workout. And then we'll see what else is still different because there's still one more thing that I think makes a big drastic difference between the two. Well, now that we're at home at the end of the day, I like to watch my own YouTube videos. But one thing I do love about the Apple Watch is being able to text my friends back. And the one downside of the SE is it doesn't have a keyboard. You have to either use the swipe or use your voice to write the message, whereas the Apple Watch Ultra and the Series 8 have a keyboard so I can go ahead and swipe as well as type on the little keyboard here. And that just gets me more accuracy because you know, Siri works sometimes, but it doesn't always get the best audio. When it comes to telling time, both of these watches are pretty good at it. Whatever watch face you have, usually the time will be on there. And for the most part, I've noticed that the time accuracy is pretty good. For overall, in terms of battery, the Apple Watch SC is rated for 18 hours and the Apple Watch Ultra is rated for 36 hours. So this obviously has a bigger battery life and that's one of my favorite features. Whereas the SC, you're gonna have to charge it more often. So if you're okay with charging your watch more often, the SC is totally fine. Uh, I, I do try to get in the habit of charging my watch in the morning as well as at night. And then that overall keeps the screen going. This also does have an always on display, but I never turned it on just because I'm trying to save as much battery as possible. Whereas the SE does not have the always on display. So it can be valuable, right? If you want to see the watch screen and what's on your display without having to flick your wrist or tap the screen. It's not always perfect. So the always on display can help mitigate those issues where you're like, hey, flick, 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 and you can't get the screen to turn on. Now let's look at the battery usage overall in the past few hours. Obviously the Ultra has less battery because it didn't charge as much, but the SE decline was much slower than the Ultra decline. And that's due to the fact that I was using cellular on the Ultra, whereas the SC was just disconnected from my phone. So overall battery life, if you're using the cellular, you're gonna destroy your battery. Whereas if you're not using cellular, it'll drain much slower. All right, now the three biggest differences for me are the battery life. The battery life is much better on the Ultra if you're not using cellular. The health features, so the Apple Watch Ultra has EKG, oxygen, as well as body temperature, so when you're sleeping. And lastly, the action button. Having precision start in my runs, as well as another button to be able to execute different tasks on the watch is extremely valuable. A lot of the third-party apps don't have support for it yet, so I'm hoping that that rolls out soon. But if you don't need those three things, then honestly, the Apple Watch SE is probably the best smartwatch out on the market, and it's super cheap, so save your money. Now I'm gonna go to bed, and there's one thing that these both watches do really well, and that is sleep tracking. Obviously, the SE at a smaller form factor is much easier to sleep with if you can't sleep with something big on your wrist. It took me a couple of nights, I got used to it and I forgot about it, but I've been wearing the Ultra on my wrist every single night and they both have the same sleep tracking algorithm. It's super easy to see your sleep. They're both super fast and you're able to maneuver all the apps very quickly. The one upside of the Ultra is the skin temperature sensor. So if you're trying to do any kind of period tracking or data on your body temperature, the Ultra has that benefit. I haven't seen any insights built on top of that just yet, but if you want something to track your sleep, your fitness, a little smartphone on your wrist, the SE does all those things. The Ultra just adds some extra features and if you're a power user, this might be the way to go. Since you enjoyed this video, go watch my actual day in the life video of the Apple Watch Ultra right here. If you plan to buy a watch, use my links below. It helps support the channel. Other than that, good night.